so the visual editor uh, which we have we have up here um, has various you know I guess kind of self evident uh, menus we can delete all the default stuff that's in the file do not uh, delete anything in this top section just like, leave well alone honestly you will unleash uh, you will unleash Beelzebub from Hades if you uh, delete anything up there so leave all, leave all that alone and just start underneath um, so what's in these menus the first thing is um, you, we can set headings so when you're structuring a document uh, you might be used to doing this in things like Word or you might not people vary in what they do but there's uh, kind of pre-formatted um, headings and other text formats that you can use and basically use these like don't use don't create a header by just putting something in bold just do not do that uh, structure it think what's what's my level one header what are my subheadings and things like that so let's begin with a level one headings so this is going to be um you know sort of a top level heading and what we're going to within this document we're going to create some information about my favorite band which is iron maiden so we're going to create a we just start let's talk well i guess right hang on let's write about iron maiden so we've got a header and we might now think okay let's have a subheading so what what within the heading of iron maiden are we going to talk about well let's first talk about band members so let's choose a level two header for band members and let's have some text my favorite band members are and uh well let's do a list so up here we can do a bulleted or a numbered list let's do a bulleted list oh that's, sorry let's hit return to bulleted list my favorite members are adrian smith and dave murray If I hit return twice, I come out of the list. So we've got, we can do a bulleted list. You'll be familiar with bulleted lists. So uh, that's great. Um, so there, we've covered something on band members. Let's put in another header. Okay, let's keep this at level two. So we think this is like, a, this, this is not a subheading of band members. This is something different, but it's still under the heading of Iron Maiden. And let's have a look at their logo. So we've got logo as a level two heading. Um, if you want to insert images, then there's this button up here or icon up here to insert a figure. It brings up this dialog box and you can choose a figure from a URL. If you can find a, uh, you know, like a web address of an image, you can paste that in there or we can browse to an image. So once we initiate the browser, it uh, opens the folder that the Quarto document is in, which is our Rdocs folder. If we come out of that. Now you remember I copied an image into our images folder before, so I'm just gonna to navigate to that. And there we have an image that we wanna put in. So here's what we're gonna put in. This file path is basically just saying within our RStudio project in the images folder, there's a, a file. Uh, we can ha we can add a caption to it. Iron Maiden's logo. Alternative text. So this is uh, for accessibility. Uh, a picture of Iron Maiden's logo. And we could have a link. So we could put a link to their website if we wanted to. IronMaiden.com. And click on OK. There we have it. The logo has been put in. Now, once it's in, you can see there's a like a width and a height, and uh, we can change that. Like maybe that's too big. Uh, and by locking the ratio, what we're doing is locking the aspect ratio of the image. So if we make the width smaller, the height will adjust proportionately. So let's say we just we want it 200 wide. We can change that to 200. Hit return. We get a smaller logo. Uh, you can see it's captioned it like we asked it to and um yeah if we want to go back in to uh, the settings for the pitch we can click on these three dots here and go back to that that screen which now also allows us to adjust 
the height of the image as well. We can align it center maybe instead of in the default location. Uh, maybe the caption, we want to call it figure one. I don't know. But anyway, you can uh, you can adjust things like that. So that's how you get images in. Um, let's do another subheading now and have a look at some other things. So we'll do another level two heading. And now we'll talk about my favorite albums. Uh, and I'm gonna list my two favorite albums. Let's, let's try and keep this brief. Uh, so we can do a numbered list here by clicking on this button. Uh, my favorite album is called Peace of Mind. And uh, my second favorite album is called Power Slave. Again, if I return twice, that gets me out of the list. So now we've got a lovely list, uh, but let's, you might be thinking, well, I want to know about these albums now. You know, as a reader, you might want to know about them. So let's insert a hyperlink. So if I select the text for peace of mind and go to this uh, icon that looks like a link, that'll open a dialog box for putting in a link. And um, I basically want to like paste a URL there. So what I'm going to paste is the Wikipedia entry for peace of mind. So people can find out some information. So now if people, um, oh, actually let's, let's, let's put a tool tip as well. So people know what it's linking to. Uh, it's linking to wiki page for the album piece of mind. So now, that link's been added. Um, you can see if we hover over it, our, our little tooltip appears, should appear. There you go, wiki page. Um, and when it's, if we click on it, it will show us where it's directing to. Again, we can click on the three dots to edit the attributes. And when this is rendered, that will be a link that someone can click on that will go uh, to the wiki page. Okay, let's do another subhead. Um, maybe let's make this uh, level three, because now we're we're going to talk about lyrics. And you know, I guess you know, lyrics might come within albums. So we'll have a subhead for lyrics. Um, lyrics are not their strong point but here's a quote from ooh, here's a quote from a decent song called and let's put this in italic so you can hit the italic button to make something italic um and um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this in a block quote. So we hit return. Now within the format menu, there's, you know, you can do all the things like bold and italic and um, it shows you keyboard shortcuts that you can use as well. I mean, typically I, uh, I would use the keyboard shortcuts because it saves a lot of time. Um, but if you want to put a block quote in, you have to select it from this menu and that formats what we're about to do within a block quote. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some lyrics in. So there we go. And there, as you can see, formatted as a block quote, we could, you know, if we had more lyrics, we'd still be in our block quote, but I just want that in the block quote. So let's uh, click underneath to get out of the block quote. Um, and I guess while we're still talking about albums, we'll have another level three header. Um, Spotify data. So there's a, a package in R called the Spotify package, which allows you to kind of scrape information from Spotify, which I have done for all the, <laughs> for the uh, Iron Maiden albums. These are actually, they're, they're the data that I copied into the, uh, the data folder. So I got these data using the Spotify package. 
Now we might want to format Spotify as code because it's a package. Uh, again, we can do this either using uh, this icon here or format it as code or within the format menu. Uh, we can uh, select to format something as code. So you can, you know, if you're if you're quoting some code or something like that, you can format it as code. At this point, let's talk about code chunks. So we've uh, we've had a look at text and we've formatted some stuff. But at some point, we're going to have to want if we're going to have to want, we're going to have to interact with R. So how do we interact with R? We do that by um, creating a code chunk. So to do that, we go to the insert menu, code chunk, and you can actually use a lot of it in all sorts of different languages, but we're using R. And that creates this sort of, uh, you know, grayed out text area. So this is where we can write code. So anything we write in this gray box is going to be processed as our code. So let's put some code in here. And the aim of this tutorial is not to teach coding. We'll, we'll do that in other tutorials. That code is basically going to read in the data file. So that's what it's done. Now notice uh, I just clicked on this green arrow that executes the code chunk. So if you want to kind of have a look as you're going along at what you're doing, you can do that. Um, let's add, I'm just, I'm actually going to paste in some code that lets us look, basically lets us look at a sample of these data as um, a kind of table. So again, we can click on this green arrow to execute that and it shows us it in the document. And if you know, if you want to then not see it anymore, you can click on that. When we render this document now, let's have a look over here in our rendered document, we've got all this lovely stuff, but notice where we have some R code we now have output below it. So through the process of rendering, that code gets executed and we see the results. So for example, we see that, that, that this code basically asks it to, to print out um, the data in the table. And um, yeah, that's what it does. If we uh, click on that button, it will pop the Quarto document out into a web browser. So we can have a look at it in a web browser. You can see this is what we have created.